What's going on everybody? Welcome to Mountain Vibes. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if this is your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button. That way you're not going to miss any future release content here on the channel. So today's video is going to be a bit of a big one, you know, not in terms of length, even though yes, we are talking about ski length, but in the fact that there are a lot of varying opinions in how one should actually measure or determine how long your skis should be. So in today's video, what do you say we light up that comment section and discuss approximately how long your skis should be? I want to start off this video by stating that not all skis are measured equally. You know, you, some lengths you may get from some brands that they're giving you the length like pre-shape after they were with the raw materials went before it actually goes into the mold. Other brands may give you the length after it's been shaped and after the skis actually been pressed. And at the same time though, not every brand will make the exact same length. So if you've been told that you need a 160, don't be dead set on that you will or need that 160 because if you start looking at other brands, that 160 may or may not exist. If it exists, there may be a slight variance in between the two. Or if it doesn't, you may find a 158, a 162, 163. So you have to give yourself a little bit of leeway. And this is why it's very advantageous to actually go into a shop and physically hold the ski and see where it actually comes up to you. Because if you were to purchase it online and all of a sudden the ski is shorter or longer than what you have actually seen or what you've been told, you may be a little bit surprised when that actually happens. But at the same time, you cannot be dead set on a very particular length. Okay, moving on. And now before you really determine how long your ski should be, you have to ask yourself a few simple questions. You know, the first one and the biggest one is what type of skier are you? You know, are you beginner? Are you intermediate? Are you an advanced skier? Uh, what style of skiing do you do? Uh, are you a much more cautious and a much more conservative skier? Or are you a much more aggressive skier? Are you very fast? Uh, and then as well, what type of terrain do you find yourself skiing the most? Or what type of terrain do you want your skis to handle the most? You know, are you gonna be more of a groomer style skier who likes to make fast, quick turns? Or are you gonna be looking for more of a wider, more of an all mountain ski that you can kind of take everywhere uh, and through the trees, the, through the bowls and nice soft snow? So once you kind of determine that, then you can actually just start determining at least your starting point for your skis. Now, generally you're gonna be measuring the skis to the where they come to like actually on your face. Now, this is kind of where it's nice to actually be in a ski shop so you can actually see where they actually come up to. Uh, if need be, you probably could get a measuring tape out and find out exactly how long they should be or how long the skis will be if they come up to you, but it is a lot better to actually hold them physically up to you. As well though, when you are shopping in person and you are someone who likes to wear, let's say, heels or a shoe that has a very thick sole, it may throw that measurement off a little bit. So you may be asked to actually take your shoes off just to drop it down, just to give um, you know, the sales associate a much better representation of how tall you actually are. Now, you may find online that you know, they're gonna say that, oh, beginner skis are meant to be at your chin and much more advanced skis are supposed to be at the top of your head. Now, they're not wrong in saying that, but the thing is that you have to start factoring in the type of ski that you're looking at to begin with. Because that will also change not only the starting point, but also the, um, the long end of the skis as well. So if you're someone who is looking for more of a groomer or front side focused ski, they're going to have a lot more camber to it. And by that, you're going to have a lot more edge contact. Um, if you're not too familiar with camber, uh, I did recently release a video, rocker and camber. Uh, I'll just link it up here if you want to check that out. Um, these skis can be skied a little bit shorter, especially if you're someone who's actually looking for something that's got a little bit more grip to it, it's gonna have a lot more tighter turning radius. You're gonna go for something more in this range here, depending on how much camber you actually have. Now, if you're someone who is actually looking for a ski that is, has, or sorry, has a lot more rocker to it, by that, your, your edge contact is being brought inwards in relation to the length of the ski, you're gonna have to have something that's gonna be a little bit longer. Now, if you're someone who, let's say, wants to have a ski like that, but you're still a little bit more timid, you're not necessarily the strongest skier, instead of your starting point being your chin, your starting point will now start creeping up a little bit more towards your nose. This is because you do not have as much edge contact as more of a traditionally shaped ski. Um, so a ski that's up here, in theory, skis more like down here. Now, yes, they have a little bit more length to deal with, but by you losing a little bit more of that edge contact, going a little bit longer will be a little bit more advantageous, making the ski a little bit more stable. 
Now, another thing to factor in is like, it's say if you're someone who likes to make like really tight turns, you will be looking at something that's referred to as the turning radius of a ski. Uh, this is where the skis will be made a little bit shorter as well. You don't need to ski them quite as long because therefore the skis are meant to be very quick and very snappy uh, with their turning style. Okay, so now that we've looked at like your starting point or your range in which the size of skis should be, you know, why would someone wanna go for something a little bit on the shorter side of that spectrum? Well, to start off, if you're a beginner, you're gonna to wanna to go for something a little bit shorter, mainly because the skis are gonna be a lot easier to manage. You're not gonna necessarily need as much strength to push the ski around and be a little bit more nimble. Um, as well though, if you are someone to say, if you come off of an injury or may not have the strength that you used to, you could be a very seasoned skier, but you don't just necessarily ski the way that you used to, you could go for something a little bit shorter as well, uh, just to help uh, help you manage the ski a lot better. You don't necessarily have to be as strong to push it around. Um, as well, if you are below the average weight of your height, that took a while to figure out, uh, you would want to go for something a little bit shorter as well, just simply because you do not have the mass to push the ski around. Um, and again, if you want something that's gonna be a little bit tighter turning, you will really want a little bit more of a carving oriented or carving style ski, then you could go for a little bit on the shorter end of the spectrum. Okay, so now why would you wanna go for a longer ski or go for a ski towards the longer end of the spectrum? Well, if you are a much more aggressive skier and you're like someone who likes to ski fast, having a longer ski will definitely give you a lot more stability. If you are an individual who's a little bit heavier than the average weight for your height, um, having a longer ski will be able to support you a lot more, and especially if you decide to push the ski a little bit harder, um, having the longer ski will be able to kind of fight back and kind of give you a lot more stability. Uh, if you are someone who's looking for a rocker ski, you wanna go for something a little bit taller. Um, biggest reason is because as you add more and more rocker to a ski, as mentioned earlier, you are losing effective edge. So by sizing the ski up a little bit more, you're gonna get a little bit more stability because you are now getting a lot more edge grip. Um, same thing with rocker tip and tails. Uh, usually if you're looking at a twin tip, they're gonna have a little bit of that to it. So you're gonna have to size up the skis a little bit more. Um, and as well, if you like to ski off piste or do a lot of, let's say tree skiing, you wanna want maybe go something a little bit longer, just so then that way you have a little bit more surface area and the skis are gonna be able to stay up. Now as well, keep in mind, if you don't necessarily wanna have a nice scoop or crazy long ski, and you wanna be able to be a little bit more nimble in trees, Go for something not quite as long, but longer than what you would use for, say, if you're uh, having just like a normal on piste ski. So that's pretty much for my video for today. Uh, I'm aware that it's not necessarily the most definitive guide in sizing your skis, but it's giving you a nice sort of idea as to where the skis should be measured. Um, I didn't want to have to go and say, oh, if you're 5'10", you need a ski that's this length for this type of skiing. Um, everything's gonna be different for everybody. Every manufacturer makes lengths that are uh, a lot different from one another. So it's always gonna be, you're always gonna have a little bit of a compromise in terms of how long your skis are actually gonna be. So having said all that, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It'd be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you are not already. Support your local ski and snowboard shop. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'll see you guys in the next video.